Welcome to my transparent watercolor tutorial, Still Standing. This is a narrated step-by-step -step tutorial at regular speed. This is the companion to my transparent watercolor demonstration video for Still Standing, which is set to music at three times speed so you can watch the evolution uninterrupted. On the right side is the photographic reference I used for this painting. It's where I got my inspiration. And you can see there's no obvious light source in this, so I've decided to have the light source coming from the left, and I'm going to highlight the left side of my, uh, the structure of my painting. There's a few small highlights where I want to save the white, so I've decided I'm just going to mask those areas off at the start before I begin painting. I'm using a fine line masking fluid pen to do this. So I've masked uh, a few of the little areas where light's going to be shining through uh, this uh, building structure and um, I did that in the doorway and I did it doing that on the side and I'm going to touch on a few highlights on the, the structure itself. I'm going to start to put in a wash. Um, I'm starting on the shadow side of this building and as I start this painting I'm going to work with the larger shapes first and then work down to the smaller shapes. So here I'm putting on a wash that's a mixture of ultramarine blue and a little uh, burnt sienna in it and to gray it down. Then I also have uh, some other mixes. The uh, ultramarine blue with a touch of Blizzard and Crimson to give a little bit of a purple tone and you can see that I'm going to gradate these washes these different colored washes into one another as I paint the side of this and and as I apply this wash overall it's much more interesting to have a variety of color in your wash rather than just a, a single color flat wash these colors are grading gradating into one another and um, while I'm changing the colors, they're all pretty much the same middle value, actually a light to, to a light middle value. So while I'm, ch I'm changing color, but I'm not changing value with this wash. You often hear this mixing of colors into a wash called charging your wash. You're putting an overall tone of one color, but you're bringing in uh, other other colors into the wash and, and gradating them in and in this essence charging your wash with other colors. I'm going to move this wash down into the foreground and I'm uh, using my brush strokes to suggest some direction here. Uh, I'm, I'm not overdoing it with my uh, brush. I'm just making a statement with my brush and then I'm moving on. I'm going to take a warmer mixture here. This is still ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, but it's uh, uh, much more burnt sienna in this mixture than ultramarine blue. And I'm just using this wash. It's a similar value to what I put on the side of the structure and on the foreground. And I'm putting it here to suggest where some of the shrubbery is. Now I'm going to come in with a cooler wash here and uh, indicate this area behind this shrubbery. So there's a, a play here of warm against cool. And I really haven't changed my values yet as I've been applying this wash. It's all very close on the value scale. I'm going to take that, that same tone. I'm going to hit it underneath uh, the roof of this structure. and talk a little bit about value again. I think there's times when people think because they've changed color, they've changed value, and that's not necessarily the case. And you can see that there's a number of colors at work here, but if you squint, it's all pretty close in value on the value scale. So changing color doesn't necessarily mean you're changing your value. And just to point out again, I'm still working with the larger shapes in my composition. As the painting progresses, I'll start working in smaller uh, areas and smaller shapes.
Now I'm going to come in behind this structure into the sky and apply a very light warm wash. It's just enough to um, differentiate that sky area from the lighter areas on the structure and it's not going to be too busy it's not going to have a lot of value change it's going to be very plain very light i don't want it to detract from uh, the structure is really where I, I want to draw you into this painting so it's just a tone that um, puts that that shape that large shape more in the background it makes it feel more distant To this point I really haven't changed my value but now I'm going to start to go darker. So I've got uh, this burnt sienna ultramarine blue mixture and you can see it's very neutral. As I apply this wash there's areas of warm and cool then I'm varying the mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue so more burnt sienna to take it towards warm more ultramarine blue to take it towards cool and then as I apply these I take some clear water and I gradate these washes out a bit so that the there's a transition from a, a middle value to a light value I'm beginning to apply a, a darker value, very neutral um, gray to send this, this part of the, the uh, side building back. Here I'm taking some of that same neutral and I'm applying it in some of the shadow areas. I have a uh, much warmer mixture of uh, yellow ochre with a touch of burnt sienna in it and it's, it's applying a, uh, a warmer medium value to the, 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 the light side of this building. I'm going to take some of this warm neutral and I'm going to uh, put some brush strokes of it in, in various places just to give some contrast, some color contrast to the cools that I've used. But the values are very similar and I'm still not really very dark with my values. So right now my values are probably about middle value and I'm going to use my uh, value checker uh, to see how dark I really am. And you can see that there's really um, no, there's no area on this painting yet that's much beyond middle value. And you can see as I box this in with these two value checkers, um, there's my darkest value, but it's very much middle middle value still. I still haven't gone very dark on the value scale. You can see when you look to the right of that how dark that value scale is. There's nothing close to that on my painting. And this is where some people stop. They don't go beyond this with their values. And it really keeps their uh, painting from reaching its full potential because they don't fully explore the value scale. So I want to give the suggestion of this of the boards and panels that, that normally make up the side of a barn and they make up this one. So I've got a one inch flat brush with a darker value neutral and you can see that I'm just taking my brush and I'm just pulling it down and it's a one inch brush but I've got it at an angle so that when I pull it down it, it makes a uh, mark it's much more narrow. I also use the side of the brush as I, I was doing just there. Uh, you, you can make all kinds of different marks with a brush just by changing the angle on how you use it and 
So just using the same brush, you can get many uh, different effects. So while I'm, I'm putting these marks down, they're, they're very hard edged and they're, they're really not how I want to leave this. So I'm coming in with my fine mist spray and I'm going to hit these brush strokes that I just put down. And what it's going to do is soften the edges and they're going to merge together. And they're really, this is part of the beauty of working with transparent watercolor. You, you can't get this with other mediums and uh, you can see how nicely that came together. Now I'm going to come in with my darkest value yet, and you can see the contrast um, even with the middle value. When I place that near a, a light or a white, it's going to be very dark. So even at this dark value, I'm still going to work with warm and cools. So this is a very dark value that's a mixture of burnt sienna, sepia, and I put in touches of royal blue to cool it down, and that's what I'm applying right now. And I bring in a little bits of uh, lizard and crimson to warm it up. And right now, that area that I'm uh, painting around is a has a couple of the small areas where I put masking fluid to save some highlights, and that's where it's going to suggest that there's light coming in the through the back of the building inside that door that you can see. And when I remove that masking fluid, that'll really stand out. But you can see that the still maintaining the the warm and cool tones as I even as I paint this even in, in those very dark values. So I'm working around this structure with this uh, very dark value tone, and um, there's a lot of little brush marks to make to indicate. Uh, the space between the boards and the, and the spots where the boards are missing. Um, but you can still see I'm maintaining warm and cool. Although I don't see it in my reference material, um, I'm going to suggest a bit of a horizon line back there. And uh, it's going to give me a stronger horizontal. You always want to have a uh, horizontal somewhere in your composition of your landscape it just helps bring balance to the composition and makes it um, more believable as landscape and, and it shows that a horizontal plane so now I'm doing some more detailed brushwork uh, than what I've been doing and I'm starting to get away from the larger shapes and now I'm putting in these dark valued uh, details across the composition. There's more brushwork on the side. I'm just going to continue to detail little areas of this building that start to give it some character. Here I have a bit darker neutral and I'm going to put it on the uh, this back this back building here to, to try and send it back even more here I'm taking this darker tone and I'm applying it more towards the base of the structure than I'm gradating it upwards Probably most often when I'm putting a wash on it, I'm gradating it from the top down. But in this instance, I'm putting the dark tone at the bottom, uh, the base of this building, and then I'm uh, gradating it upwards. And you can see, st still see the warm and the cool colors that I'm working with. These neutrals wouldn't be near as interesting in these uh, shadowed areas if I wasn't working warm into the cool and cool into some of the warm areas. Now 
this is a mixture mostly of burnt sienna that I have here and it still has just a touch of ultramarine blue. As I lay down these tones, you can see I just make a brush stroke and, and I leave it. I don't keep uh, re reworking or, or brushing the same paint around. I'm trying to keep it fresh and I create shapes with my brush as I, as I lay down a brush stroke. These aren't these aren't shapes that I've drawn from the photo or anything else. It's an area where I feel I need a tone, a dark tone or a warm tone or a cool tone, and I lay in a brush stroke. So now I'm going to do some of that underneath the, the shadow edge of that building, but you can see it's just a quick brush stroke and then I'm off to the next area. And here just a just a dot, a dash. Just brush stroke and move on. So I want to take down a little bit more of this white. Um, so I'm using more of this uh, warm, kind of warm neutral to uh, tie some of that together. Still going to leave the white, but um, I just want to take down some of it and use this warm neutral. And I still have a little bit more um, detail to do with this dark valued uh, tone that I have. Now I'm going to take some darker glaze and a few bigger shapes in this area. And um, just as I did in, in the area around the inside the door, some of these uh, window shapes and board, these, these voids in the building have uh, some masking fluid there that's going to preserve some white highlights. So uh, I'm taking a dark tone so that those areas really stand out and they look like they're coming through the back of the building. I'm going to take my pickup eraser and I'm going to start removing these small areas of masking that I had put on before I started to paint. And you can see as I do this, some of these uh, very white white now that I had saved are going to start to show. And uh, you can see in that door shape, I have that, those light uh, tones in there now and uh, the white of the paper reflecting. And I have the same going on, on the side of the building and some of the highlights on a few areas of the structure. I didn't really didn't use a lot of it, but just touched on some of the highlights that I wanted to preserve. So on the left side of my composition, I have some linear branch shapes that I bring in from the left side. And uh, I'm using a, a fine rigor brush to make these marks just to suggest branches. I'm using a dark valued tone here and it's going to over, overlap the bushes and it's going to overlap some of the ends will go over the uh, building structure and it'll help create some depth in the painting. I'm going to take that same brush. I'm going to give a suggestion of a few more uh, linear shapes coming up off that ground. I'm, I'm not overdoing it, just a suggestion here or there, and it helps give um, some uh, dimension and creates a little distance between the foreground and the, the building structure by putting some of those in on that in the front foreground. making the suggestion of some lightning rods up there and uh, some cable and just to the to the right there giving the suggestion of some uh, cables that are coming from the barn and a little bit on the left too so I'm um, using that same liner brush of the rigger
at the last moment I decided I wanted some texture in the foreground and in, in the tree and shrub area so I put some dark value paint into my brush and I'm just tapping it against my fingers and I'm just creating a splatter which is going to give some texture to those areas. And that's my painting still standing. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.